Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today for this winter landscape painting on a 20 by 24 black primed canvas. We'll be using the following colors, ultramarine blue, viridian green, and turquoise, as well as titanium white. I'm gonna be using a large filbert brush and I'm gonna do a horizon line right about here. I'm purposely leaving a little space right here for our little waterfalls and river. And then I'm gonna come in with some sort of chunky lumpy curvy lines here and little brush strokes to create the uh, snow bed on either side of the river and just doing this roughly and loosely leaving some thinner areas of paint so we can see the darker canvas showing through and this is what's going to create our shadows and our highlights in our painting so we want to build up some of these snow mounds and by doing that we're going to use more paint and push up higher making almost like half circles um, this just will make your painting look 3d and uh, feel a little bit more realistic so i'm just going to blend out the leftover paint that's in my brush just kind of scumbling that out, giving it that light, misty, thin layered look. Now I'm going to start creating the moon and I'm still using my round filbert brush here, just with a little bit of white on my brush, tiny bit of water. I'm just going to go around and around and then push, twist and turn my brush around to create a nice circle for my moon shape. And then I'm going to go around and around, creating um, a little haze and rings around the moon. And then I'm going to come in with the tip of my brush, push and wiggle, and create a little bit of a cloud effect. So I've been doing this a lot in my paintings lately. Uh, if you want to have a little bit more practice and watch a few more videos, um, I'll leave a link below for those. They're all going to be in my um, fantasy painting tutorial playlist or in my winter and Christmas themed one. And I come in the center of my moon and add a little bit more of my titanium white to make it the brightest in the center. Then I'm gonna add a nice highlight to these peaks, these little half circles for our clouds. And then I'll soften around, making some of them bigger and just softly scumbling and blending in, kind of pushing and wiggling my brush around to make little soft swirls and then just kind of letting off. I'm not going to do the entire sky um, in clouds. I'm going to leave some room for some snow that we're going to add later, as well as the smoke from the chimney and uh, the trees. So we'll leave that for now. I'm just going to get a little bit more paint on my brush. I'm going to line it up on the horizon, press, pull and flick up for instant forest. This is such an easy, easy technique. It's so effective. Anybody can do this and it just it helps a lot when you're building up a landscape that's got a lot of trees in it and foliage. So we do that first. Then I come in with more paint on the tip of my brush and I'm just going to start tapping at the top, small little taps to make those baby little branches and then leaving a few spaces. You can see those little gaps in between and then just pushing and tapping side to side. Now the filbert brush is by far my favorite brush, my most favorite brush that I recommend. I love using this brush to create trees, especially those snow cover trees. And uh, this is really, really striking in black and white. You could just leave your painting in black and white and it would still be really, really pretty. Um, but with this base that we're doing black and white, you could come in with any color after it's all dried. Uh, it's really fun to do this painting, this style of painting a few different times and do three or four of them all in different colors. You could give them away as gifts to people um, or just hang them in a set on your wall. They look really pretty together. So I'm gonna come in and add some more white now to the snow in the foreground. And then we'll start working on our little forest back here. So just pulling and flicking. I'm bringing these ones up a little bit taller and then I'm gonna leave a little space where our cabin is gonna be, our little winter cabin. And I'll just roughly come in with the roof line here and the shape, we're just doing a really basic, simple uh, cabin shape. 
and the highlights are going to be on the roof where the snow is so we'll do like bright white on the top here and then i'm going to leave a little space where we're going to have the shadow uh, falling on that roof from the chimney so if you wonder why i'm going to leave a little gap there that's what that's going to be for you'll see that in just a moment so i'll come in with a few little lines here for the edge of the house the corners and i'll also be adding a few little windows and a door i'm going to come right over to this tree on the far right side this is going to be a big tree and it's going to come down a, just a little bit lower than the rest so it sets it kind of a little bit closer to us and then i'm going to just continue along here adding one tree at a time and trust me if you guys um, start painting trees with a filbert brush you're going to be so addicted and i really wish i could remember uh, the make of these brushes it's worn off now on the handle but they're really really great brushes so i'll try my best to find out what they are and uh, i got a whole set of them they're really nice so i hope um, i can remember what they're called and then leave a link for you guys down below so i'm going to keep coming in down below throughout the video adding a little bit more white here and there and eventually we're going to start coming in with our turquoise our ultramarine blue and our viridian green now of course if you don't have these exact shades just use the next um, colors that you have closest to this like cobalt blue phthalo blue would be absolutely beautiful um, i might do a few more um, we're getting close to Christmas now and I've done probably about 27 in total brand new winter Christmas themed paintings just this year and I'm I'm almost done I think I've got a few more that I might um, it depends how much time I have but I'll try to do a few more I've got a few more ideas in my mind so here I'm coming in you can see with a little bit of my Viridian green a little bit of turquoise I've got a hint of white still in my brush now I'm picking up and adding a little bit of the blue the ultramarine blue and i'm not washing my brush out i'm just kind of pulling back and forth spreading the paint around and so it's going to be a little bit different lighter in some areas and darker in other areas i don't i really want to stay away from making it completely the same tone for the entire river or creek you want to change it up because the light's going to be hitting it differently from all directions so you and especially when it's moving water right it's not going to be the same there's going to be rocks underneath the water different depths so that all plays a part in making um, the lightness and the shadow the darkness of the water different all the time um, so i'll be adding some light little highlights um, but right below the little waterfalls that we're gonna add and as well as in the middle, we'll add a few little swirls here and there. And then I'm gonna start coming over these clouds up here. Um, I accidentally pulled and flicked a little bit of the white from the top of the tree, but it's not a big deal. I think it actually looks kind of pretty and whimsical. And I'm just gonna scumble in over the sky here, this leftover paint in my brush, which is the turquoise, just a tiny bit of white and the green and the blue. And then I'm going to come down over on the snowbank on either side here. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of the greens, my turquoise and my viridian green. If you don't have viridian green, you can use phthalo green as well. Any blue green will uh, work just fine. And again, um, for the snow on either side here, I don't want it to all be the same color. So I'm going to leave some parts with more white. I'm going to add more blue to some areas later on. And I'm going to come in here now and add some more clouds. I'm going to build up the cloud effect here. I really love to play around with building up clouds in the sky. I just think it's so much fun, especially when we've got a full moon. And then... Um, all of a sudden I just decided how pretty and dreamy it would look to maybe just add a few little waterfalls perhaps back here um, so I just went ahead and did that I'm having fun just kind of maybe putting a little uh, fantasy twist on this painting it's very possible for there to be waterfalls in the background there in the distance um, but I think it looks pretty and I'm, I'm glad I added that and then in the foreground for our river or our creek, I decided to add some waterfalls there as well. And I would, I really wasn't going to at the beginning. I thought I was just going to leave it as a little river and keep it kind of flat. Um, but I thought, why not? Just go ahead and try it. I really want to have fun when I'm painting. So I tend to just go with thoughts that come to my mind while I'm painting. I keep it really intuitive and fresh. 
And I think it's kind of fun for you guys to watch watch as I do that. So I'm lining my brush up, pulling and dragging, and then flicking down. I want this to be a little, like a shorter waterfall. Um, of course, because this water's not super deep. I'm just gonna do these little short waterfalls, just a couple here, and then um, blend out a little bit of that leftover paint that's on my brush. And then I'm gonna just need to come in here a few times and add a little bit more of the white to brighten up parts of the waterfall so that's not all the same color and tone as well. And you really wanna keep it sort of see-through. You wanna have those little lines um, separate. You don't want your waterfall to look solid. It needs to be a little bit transparent and translucent in some areas. So taking a little bit more of my turquoise here, I'm just gonna wiggle and go in and around some of the trees and over top of some of the trees i'm kind of just doing a little bit um, over the sky and the trees but also wanting to leave some of that uh, black um, canvas showing because i think it just adds such a nice contrast so i'm not going to cover the entire canvas and i'm going to come over now with more white paint building this up one layer at a time really really making it look like there's soft mounds of snow here and little hills little snow banks um, I want it I, yes winter is cold and it can be harsh but I want to capture how pretty and soft um, and gentle it can look and feel at the same time if that makes sense uh, I grew up in the Rockies of Canada where we had have winters that look like this and even though it can be bitterly cold it can be so so beautiful and feel magical so I'm going to brush back and forth down in the river, adding another thin layer of a bit of white turquoise and then coming over on parts of the snow. I'm going to start adding a little bit more color now. So we're going to be alternating with the green and the white, just building up all these fun layers because every time that we, it's really important to do this one layer at a time, every time we add more white, it's going to make that base brighter um, for our color to show up. So there are going to be some areas where you want to leave all that white paint there, but it really makes a nice clean base, a nice bright base where when we add the green over top, and you can see on the right side there the last time I just added that turquoise and the Verdian green, it's a, a really, really uh, clean looking color and it shows up much better than if I just try to add it over um, the the white the thin layers of the white and the black itself it's going to look different so um, keep that in mind where you want your colors to be really uh, nice and bright and clean looking then you're going to want to have that nice white 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 base so i'm just tapping another layer of white on the inside of the moon here with my finger and i like to use my finger because it's nice and round and i'm not left with those um, brush brush strokes or a streaky look and then I'm gonna come in and fill in the roof line now. And this is where um, I'm gonna be leaving this little um, space here that I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave that black. This is gonna be the shadow for our chimney. And I'm gonna come in and just kind of clean up these lines along the side, adding that thick snow, and then maybe, you know, a little bit of overhang, maybe there's icicles, but this cabin so far away, we're not really gonna be able to see all, all that detail. And then I'll add a few little windows, just tapping, and I'm using a small flat brush. And I'll add a little door and a couple windows. I always like to have a little window um, up there in the loft. Now I'll come in and just add a little line here for our chimney. And then I'm gonna add some blue right below. And I'll come in and add a little bit of my green and my blue for the rest of the house, for the color. And then I'll add the indication of a little shutter on either side of the windows after. Now I need to have a darker shadow here on the left side of the roof line, so I'm going to come in and build that up using my ultramarine blue and my viridian green. So those are the two darkest colors that I've got on my palette, and that's what I'm going to use. I'm not going to go um, into any black. These are the only colors we're using. This is a very limited palette that we're using, and it can be quite, uh, quite nice to, especially if you're a beginner painter, it's really nice to use a limited palette. And just wiggling in here, just kind of shaking with my brush around and then softening up after, making it really, really narrow and small coming out of the chimney. And then it gets puffier and larger as it gets up towards the sky. I'll come in and add another light coat for my waterfalls here. 
And I'm going to be even adding a few more because they're just so much fun to paint. Add another layer of white here to make these stand out a little bit more. And back to my white. I'm going to add a few little icicles and overhang here on the, the side of the river on these little snow banks. I think this looks cool and, and this is really going from memory right now. I don't have a reference photo. I guess I should mention that too. I'm painting intuitively right now and from memory um, from where I grew up and um, seeing how the, the snow actually kind of hangs over on the side of the river and you get those icicles and, and thick pieces of ice and all those different tones of turquoise and teals and blues. It's, it really is quite beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to just come in and add a little bit more of a shadow to underneath the roof line here. And I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise to this part of the roof just because it doesn't make sense that it would be that bright on this side the moonlight would be hitting the other side of the roof but I don't want to make this really dark in shadow either so I might come back to that and add a little bit more white we'll see but now I'm going to take ultramarine blue and white and create a light blue violet this is a really really pretty color and I think this is like a really pretty powdery blue color that looks really nice with this turquoise so I want to add this shade um, into this painting and like I said if you don't have ultramarine blue you can use cobalt blue as well that's really really um, similar phthalo blue is really beautiful and you um, definitely most definitely could use that in this painting you won't get the same look though phthalo blue is quite different from it's a lot cooler than um, the cobalt and the ultramarine blue and I'm just going to add a little bit of what's left over in my brush around the moon this is going to make the center of the moon a lot brighter too and stand out even more so it's all about creating that um, gradation and softening any harsh edges especially when you're doing black and white only at first it, there's it's just such high contrast um, unless you have a few mid-tones in there of course i've done black and white paintings before where i mix a bit of black with a white to create some gray tones too which is nice and then coming in after with more color so that's more of a gray scale um, but this was on an entire black primed canvas that was completely dry and then coming in with white. Um, so that's quite different. But I mean, this is just so much fun. And I think this is a lot easier for beginner, beginning artists out there. I know in teaching my classes in the past that uh, my students have really loved this and they found it a lot easier because they don't have to focus so much on color at first. They can just focus on technique and then add the color after. So it is something to think about if you're just beginning. Even if you're an intermediate um, painter, it's a lot of fun. So I myself just love to do black and whites first and then come in with color. So I'm just adding little hints of blue here around the snowbanks of the river. And I'm going to add a little bit more to the house, um, making it uh, just a little bit brighter. And now I'm going to finish the edges here with more titanium white. Just kind of make it look a little crisper and like the light's really really hitting it there i'm going to add a little bit more light here around where these windows are and then i'm going to add more white in the door in the little windows really make them pop out and look like there's some life going on in there which of course we already feel from um, the smoke that's coming out of the chimney we know that someone's someone's in there quite cozy with a, a warm fire going It's always nice to imagine yourself in the painting that you're working on kind of helps um, the painting come to life as well as when you are painting something that you really love a place that you wish you could be or that you imagine yourself and the more we're enjoying what we're painting the the better our painting will be it's just it's just how it goes um, so really try to focus on um, things that you enjoy painting places that you love flowers that you love whatever it happens to be animals just do more of that so I'm just coming in now with ultramarine blue adding more shadows you can see in between the windows under the roof line and a little bit here on the snow bay just a little bit there blending in with some of the white and I'm just going to add a little bit of a swirly uh, pattern here just a little bit here in the water to create some movement so just a little bit of white and then I'm going to use a little bit of turquoise as well. 
I will be coming in on the sides with cobalt, or sorry, not cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and the viridian green, as you can see, making it uh, darker and creating a little bit more contrast, but more of a colorful contrast. So taking away a little bit of that jet black that we have underneath and creating some depth to the water. So keep in mind, we still have a lot of that black uh, right above our trees and in between our trees. So we, we still have a lot of black there and it does make such an impact in our paintings. I really enjoy painting on a black canvas. I've got quite a few tutorials to choose from if you guys um, enjoy it as well and you'd like to see more. I should actually have a playlist of black canvas paintings. I've got so many of them. So here I couldn't help myself. I wanted to come in and add a few more waterfalls. So I'm turning my brush and just using this little flat brush, creating a few more little skinny waterfalls back there. And then as you can see, I can take it and use it for the clouds as well. It's not quite as um, nice to use as the filbert brush is for the clouds, but it still works. And then adding just a little bit more to my um, chimney, the smoke, making it just a little bit brighter. And then brightening up the windows again. You know, when you're painting on a black canvas, acrylic um, in general tends to dry darker anyways, but on a black canvas, you're gonna need to re-highlight even more than you uh, normally would. And then I just decided here that I wanted to have a little bridge that takes you over the wa little waterfalls in the river to your little cabin, your little winter retreat. So I'm just gonna pull a little arch here, a little low arch, nothing that comes up too high. And then I'll add a few little lines in and a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of blue, keeping it really simple. You don't have to do a lot, remember guys, cause it's far away. We, we know exactly what it is, but just by doing that little arch of a line there. And then I'll come in and just dust off the rest of the blue and the turquoise that's in my brush. I'm gonna add another thin line here of white. And I'm actually gonna take white and I'm gonna re-highlight quite a few different things before I do my next step. And I'm going to go on the top of the trees and add a little bit more white to them. I'll add a little bit uh, more to this tree in general here. Um, I just wanna make sure that I've got enough white to work with and also that my tree tops are skinny enough and I want them to look a little bit more pointy and narrower. Um, that way when I come in with my shading, my colors for my shading on either side, that the white is nice and bright and we've got a good balance there. I'm going to add a little dust of white here at the base of the door, the light coming from the door and those windows, as well as a few more highlights here on the snow banks. And I'm just gonna keep going here with my highlights, building up the final highlights on these snow banks. I want them to look nice and smooth and round and soft. And then I'm gonna add more white to my roof on my cabin because I just prefer, even though it may not make sense to have it bright there and highlighted because of where the moon would be hitting, I still like the way it looks better. So I kind of just tend to go with um, what I like when I'm painting rather than if it's actually accurate and correct. Um, so I'm just going to go over here because I do just like the way it looks better with more white. I think it looks prettier. So I'll add a thin layer of white here. I'm going to leave that little line for the shadow of the chimney, which I think stands out even better now. I'm going to use the edge, the very tip of my little flat brush and do a few little lines, taps for little lines for maybe the trim around the doors and some little shutters on either side of the windows. So I'm going to also come in here and I thought I would just tap, tap, tap for some little lines for a railing and some posts on the uh, bridge. But you know, it's really not necessary. We can hardly see it. It is so far away. Um, so you don't have to do that. It's optional. But if you're wondering what it looks like, then you can see how I've done that here. Now I'm going to come over this a little bit more and make it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go over my lines just a little bit more, pushing and tapping. 
And then the leftover paint on my brush, I'm gonna come up here and do another uh, little layer of all these little puffy clouds, the little circles, and then just soften in here a little bit. Maybe there's you know a mountain back there where those waterfalls are coming from, but we can hardly see it. So there's just gonna be a little bit of the the trees, the waterfalls, the clouds kind of all just kind of blending into one another, I guess. And I'll add a little bit more white here, which I'm gonna really soften uh, in a little bit. I'll take a, a brush and that's a little bit damp and I'll kind of scumble over this and make it softer. Now I'm gonna go in with a clean brush. My trees are all dry and I'm gonna just go lightly over, filter over with my blue on one side. I'm not going to go over the entire tree because one side's going to have the light, so the moonlight hitting it. So this is really going to give these trees um, a bit more of an edge and some shadowing and make them look a little bit more 3D. Now you could definitely leave yours all white if you want. That looks pretty as well. And then over here I've got a little bit of my Viridian green with my blue. So I'm kind of using a little bit of, I'm changing it up for each tree. Some Sometimes I'm using blue, sometimes I'm using green, sometimes I'm using blue and green. And then sometimes I'll use just a little bit of turquoise. And I'm adding a shadow here down underneath and at the base of this big tree, again with my blue and my green. And then I'm gonna scumble and just kind of blend this out, pulling it out and softening that a little bit. And then on this side, you can see I've got more green that I'm using. I'll just continue to do this going around on one side of each of the trees. I'll then start painting in a few more trees behind the cabin. I feel like there was just something missing back there so I wanted to and because I just have so much fun painting trees so I wanted to add a couple more trees. So let's just continue to add a little bit of blue and green to each tree on either side a little bit at a time working our way towards the center here of the painting. And then I'm gonna add a few more of those trees I talked about in just a few minutes. And here I'm just scumbling over. This is all completely dry, so I can just kind of take my brush and carefully and lightly go right over them. Oh, and I can't forget about this tree over here. I almost forgot, so I'm gonna come back over here and add, yeah, a little bit of that blue and green. I think it makes such a nice color. So right here I've mixed up a little bit of wet white paint that I forgot uh, wasn't totally dry there. Well, that's okay, I'm just gonna go over top of here and, and just kind of redo these little branches on here I'm using a little bit of my turquoise and my white. I'm gonna make a, a light minty color first for my trees and then if I need to I'll come in with some brighter white. And I'm just going to soften in here with a little bit of my Viridian green at the base of this tree in and around some of these waterfalls. And in between the smoke from my chimney and that other tree And then just add a little bit more in between these two. And I'm going to go over top of these clouds with some more color. Back into my white and my filbert brush. I'm going to go over this one more time here. I just wasn't really thrilled with all those little lines. I just wanted to make it look like it was a little bit more covered in snow and a little bit thicker and adding another dust of white because we know as that paint sets into the canvas and dries it looks a little bit darker so i just need to keep adding a few more layers of the white here but remember you can make yours or you can leave yours as dark as you want you don't have to necessarily keep coming in with more white like me um, and i just decided to have some snow covered uh, big stones or boulders here in the water i thought that would um, be kind of fun and just add a little bit more interest here to the water and again I'm going by memory so this is actually um, how I remember it looking in the winter 
with the creeks and the rivers with the big rocks in there and just a whole bunch of snow covered on top of them. And then let's go right underneath with that ultramarine blue for a nice shadow. Little base shadow color there. And then you can go around like above too, and that will make them really stand out even more. I'm gonna add a few little flex, flicks, <laughs> flicks, flex <laughs> of the blue here and there on this either side of the river and by the little icicles. And then I'm gonna come in and do a filter over with some more of my blue and my green. I want to play up on the color and the saturation just a little bit more up in the sky. So just right here is what I mean. I want to come over and around some of those stones. Um, that will just make them stand out a little bit more, making them look 3D. And then I'll pull and wrap around some color around the moon and the edges of the canvas here in between the trees a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise right through the bridge there just to give it a little break so you can see uh, that there's a railing there. Now with my old toothbrush, some water, some white paint, I'm just going to spray on some snow and some stars. And I'm going to make one of these right here, a little glowing twinkling star. Just with my micro mini little liner brush here, I'm gonna just pull from the center a few little lines in all directions and then come in with my, uh, this is my filbert or my flat. I think it's my little filbert. Filbert or flat works. And then just soften around it. I'm gonna take some more white and I'm gonna go over this tree here, adding some more light and snow to it. And I'm going to add some more to this tree over here as well. And then we'll just add another tree or two back here. Why not? I really want this cabin to look like it's nestled in there amongst all those trees. I just, I think it helps to create some coziness for this landscape. And add a little bit more white over top of this one as well. Just a little bit here. Not every tree has to have the same amount of white on it or light. And then what I want to do is soften a little bit more around where these stars are. Stars, a bit of snow, and I'm just going to take my brush, my little filbert here, and just pull lightly, very lightly, barely touching the canvas. I'm wiggling, shaking my hand around slightly, and kind of going in and around these little white dots that I sprayed on. Some of these are really thick, so I thought why not make them uh, into like a little um, star, little stars over here, a little nebula maybe. Just something a little magical over there. Now as I add the finishing touches here, I'm just doing a layer of blue and a little bit of green, but I'm mostly using blue here. I accidentally picked up a little bit of the white, so I'm just gonna blend that out and come in with some more blue. I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and thank you so very much for watching and joining me today. I'll see you next time soon in another video. 
Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Take care, everybody.